I stay at home uh, because still to this day he eats through a feeding tube because he doesn't eat enough by mouth. May 15th was his surgery and that was the first time he ever ate by mouth. So before then I had to feed him six times a day through a feeding tube, so many ounces of formula. And now like he eats nine, 12, three and eight. So here at 12 o'clock I'll have to feed him through his feeding tube. Oakley was born with stage five chronic kidney disease. Being a single father, I haven't been able to work in the last year. You know, Oakley's kind of a full-time job for me. I'm gonna do one more thing of water, okay, and then we'll be done. It's hard, um, and it, it's hard to, it's hard for me to explain to people that haven't been through it, because it, it's hard for them to relate. But I try to tell my story the best I can. And sometimes it's hard because they don't understand it. They haven't been through it, which is okay. Because I don't wish it on anybody. We knew from early on that Oakley was going to have to have a kidney transplant. Right away, Tyler wanted to give his kidney. And I still struggled with that up until the very last minute. I was, I was scared. I was afraid anything could happen, and it couldn't just happen to one of my family members that I'm close to. It could happen to both of them. The closer the surgery date came after we finally made a date, the more I would be up at night just staring at the ceiling with thoughts racing through my head about, man, this is going to hurt, you know? But, <laughs> but there was nothing more that I wanted to do than get my son his new kidney. You know, I didn't really know about Ronald McDonald until this happened, and I went down to the Ronald McDonald room that they have for families at Children's Mercy while everybody was in surgery, and they kept me informed there of what was going on. So when Tyler's surgery was done, they came and told me that they were taking the kidney and taking it from KU Med over to Children's Mercy. So I knew Tyler was good as long as he recuperated okay, and now I had to think about Oakley and they had a dog at the Ronald McDonald room they had a dog that was in there for the kids or just a comfort service dog and when I reached for a Kleenex that dog came over to me and he laid his head on my my knee and comforted me that's what I needed Ronald McDonald house it was like the support that you didn't know you needed really and we're from Horton, Kansas, which is a 100-mile trip to Kansas City. So for the first three weeks, I think, after surgery, we'd have, we would have had to make that drive every single morning. So that would have been, you know, 200 miles round trip every single day. They had the dogs. They had food. They had snacks. They had meals. They had toys. They had books. They had anything you could ever need. At, it was like a home away from home. And it made our, our stay so much better. What I liked the best is people would come in and make lunch or dinner, and sometimes it would be um, families that they stayed at Ronald McDonald, and it was just them wanting to give back. So you were able to meet all these people and hear their story, and you finally had people around you for that time that you could relate with and understand. It was the most support I've ever had from non-family members in my life. When a family is dealing with childhood illness, uh, there's a lot of changes that have to take place. Uh, there are fiscal issues for the families, but most importantly, the family has to provide the strength uh, to that child who is ill, who is hospitalized, because that strength is probably more important than any of the medications, uh, any of the physician input that that child receives. Now, the Ronald McDonald House is an opportunity for these family members and oftentimes parents to get uh, some sleep, to get some food, and uh, have the capacity to talk to others who are dealing with uh, similar problems. And that gives those parents the strength, and that strength is then communicated to the kids, which is essential for their recovery. Tyler called me. It's the first thing he did when he came out of anesthesia, he called me, and I, I answered the phone, and he said, we did it, Mom, we did it. And I knew everything was gonna be okay. It was like when he, the day he was born, you know, seeing him for the first time, walking in. 
it, it was crazy because he had just gotten a new kidney five days prior and I could just see the change in him already. I could see how happy he was. He, he was talking more, he was eating by mouth, which he never did. He was like a brand new kid. <laughs> I got all kinds of toys. I'm so proud of him. I'm so proud my son grew up to be the, the young man that was willing to give his son a kidney because he knew that's what he had to do. And I'm proud of Oakley for being able to get through it and keep going. And he's going strong. Oakley's brought, I mean, nothing but joy and happiness to my life. Um, I always wanted a son. Never in a million years do you think you're gonna have a kid that, you know, has medical issues. All I want is for him to just be able to be a normal kid and, and be able to be around kids his age and have that normal kid experience. And now, with everything we've been through, that's finally going to be able to get to happen, and I'm so happy for that.